Yo, what's up? This is your girl Dragon and it's time for another Fortnite creative tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a time-saving mechanic. If you enjoy tutorials like these, be sure to drop a sub. That way you don't miss a thing. In addition to that, let me tell you a little bit about what we're building today. This mechanic will allow your players to come into your map, save their time, and check their time whenever they come back to your map. All right, let's All right. go. So the structure. Players spawn in, and automatically there's a timer that resets every one second. This timer is awarding a score every second. And when players spawn in, they're going to save automatically. And this will help when they're coming back into the game to save their status from when they started before. In addition to that, while their score is incrementing every second, they can come to the button or switch and press this switch to display their time. You'll see that the time will also increment as the timer increments as well. Making sure everything stays on track. Now, the devices I'm using for this setup, you can see here the channel device. And I'm using this as basically to create an array. When players spawn in, then I'll have it transmit upon that event. And I can add all my spawn pads to one instead of going to each spawn pad and sending an event. Next, I have a timer, a save point device, a switch, and a player reference device back there. I put a primitive shape and a billboard in front to replace the word score in the player reference device. So now that you know all the devices, let me go ahead and jump into the settings. All right, let's first start with the channel device. So you see there's nothing here for all options. This is set to default. For functions, when players respond, we're going to transmit. And for the events, we're going to transmit to the save point device to save the player, to enable the save point device, and to enable the player reference device. As for the spawn pads, for this tutorial, I have it set on always and so forth. And I do have players switching to a global class for this tutorial. Once you bind the channel device, you'll see that it's already gonna be appearing on all of your spawn pads. Next is the timer. So the timer is set to a duration of one second, which is 1.0. You can name your timer whatever you like and it's set to count down. It will start when the game starts and players cannot interact. So make sure you set that to no. This does apply to everyone and the success on timer end will be true. Completion behavior will be restart. Visible during game will be only timer. Now this is just for the tutorial. Once you have this set up, make sure you set this to hidden and so forth. Success score value is going to be one. And again, you can show it on HUD if you want to. Um, this is just shown because of the tutorial. Audio effects should be off. And let's see here. And then there are no functions and events, no events. Next is the save point device. This is enabled during phase gameplay only. Auto save is yes. And we're gonna save and load the player every spawn. This is just a scorekeeper. So we're not saving health 
shields. We're not saving loadout or anything else like that. You can, if you want to, have a separate save point device for those things, or if you want this one device to do all of that, you can set these to your liking. I have save all scoreboard stats, only up higher, save score, only up higher, and save round wins, no. And so forth. I do allow the player to clear their data, and that is because if there's any type of glitch or if the numbers become too high, they can clear it and start over from scratch. We're going to save player when receiving from the channel spawn pad array, which should already be binded, and this should already be binded. Next is the switch. Enabled at game start, yes. Initial state is off. Visible during game is yes. And I don't have any turn on or turn off text, but you can add some there if you like. The device model is default. Again, you can choose whatever model you like. The sound is enabled. Allow interaction is yes. and so forth. For functions, you'll see there are no functions, but for events, when the switch is turned on, we're gonna send an event to the player reference device to register the player. And when the switch is turned off, we're gonna send an event to the player reference device to clear the player. When there's a successful check, result, we're going to send an event to activate the player reference device. And that's it. Now let's look at the player reference device. And everything should be binded already, but let's check it out. The hologram is off. You can choose any color you like. It will be visible in game. And we're going to show player details. The base is off and we're gonna track the score. We're gonna update registered player, always, and so forth. And these functions should already be binded, but I'll go ahead and review again. Register player when receiving from the switch when they turn it on. Activate and receiving from the switch when the check result is successful. And we're going to clear the player when receiving from the switch turning off. The switch must be enabled, so we're going to enable it from the array, the channel device array. And there are no events. All right, so that completes the setup. Let's go ahead and run a test so you can see what it looks like. All right, so you can see that my score has saved because I've been in here about 25 seconds before. So what I'm gonna do is clear and reset progress. We can start right over. So it's still keeping time and six seconds have pa has passed and 10 seconds have passed. So look, I can go and press the switch and you can see that it continues to count. Players will be able to come here anytime to check their score. Now let's wait a few more seconds. And I'm gonna end the game and come back. So here I'm coming into a brand new game and not starting the next round. And you see my score is right where I left it at the last time. So now it continues to increment and it should reflect that I'm at 50 seconds. Almost one minute.
All right. Let me test it with a round. I still have 79 seconds on the clock. And now I have 80. It continues. And there we go. If I end the game... and come back into the game. It continues. And I can always check to see what it is. And that's how you save time and allow your players to check it whenever they come into your map. So that's one of the many ways you can create a time saving mechanic. I do hope you find this beneficial and find a way to use it on your own map. If you are feeling so kind, be sure to drop some support. You can use my creator code in the item shop. It's right there on the screen. If you do, you are awesome. I really appreciate you. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for this video, and I'll see you on the next one, okay? Bye.